Hello, welcome everybody to our formula fitness session. Today we're going to be talking about formula map. I see a lot of repeat folks, which is great. I love seeing our dear friends. I also love seeing our new folks too. So for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Maria Marquis and here at Coda, I consider myself the chief cheerleading officer. I love sitting down with people, learning, playing, tinkering, and just finding ways that we can all build our skills together. Now, lucky for all of you, I'm joined by my fabulous colleague, Hannah, who is a formula map super expert. And I'm really excited to have Hannah with me. Hannah, do you want to just introduce yourself to the group so they can know a little bit about you? Of course, I ask you as you're drinking water. How rude of me. <laughs> Always drinking water. Um... Hi, I'm Hannah. I'm a solutions architect here at Coda, and I help our um, larger clients, you know, with bespoke solutions. Um, Formula Map is my very favorite thing, and I love to use it. Even I don't need to, so um, I hope to <laughs> surpass some of that enthusiasm on. Yes, it was so funny, y'all, as I was going, okay, Formula Map is our next Formula Fitness. I need to like learn a little bit more about this. I was I was posting in our Slack channel, like, hey, does anybody, you know, want to help out? You know, like thinking of some good exercises for Formula Map. And Hannah, I kid you not, rubbed her hands together and went, I love Formula Map. Let's do it. And so we built this here together. Exactly. That's how it went. Um, so as we go through just a little bit of logistics before we begin, today is your time. So go ahead at any time if you've got something on your mind, you want to weigh in, go ahead, post to chat over there on the right side. Alex is already there. I'm so excited that you're excited for this. Um, and also, if you have a question, just so Hannah and I can make sure that we field this um, at any point in time and it doesn't get lost in our chat, that uh, there's the ask a question button along the bottom of the screen. And you can click that at any time to go ahead, post what's on your mind, and also be able to upvote and downvote questions so Hannah and I can always uh, get the most pressing questions first. Also, Graham, you are well done for catching my Coda sweatshirt. This was from our recent hackathon. Um, we are working on making Coda merch something that's possible, so stay tuned on that. But yes, I'm glad that you appreciate my fashion statement here today. So just to start us off, we have a really good question here from Graham, way to add that, which is, is Formula Map an answer to, should I make a button on these rows here or something else? Uh, so that's actually a really great question. Hannah, do you want to weigh in on kind of where you see this fitting and then uh, we'll dig in as well. Yes. Um, <laughs> my like personal approach is that like there's a, a time and a place for column buttons. Mm -hmm. um, but depending on the complexity of what you're trying to do and sort of the data set you want to operate over, formula map on the like as a canvas button or like in an automation as an action um, instead of a column level button can absolutely help you save space, create more performant doc, um, just make for like a little bit of a cleaner experience of like it's a button that no human is ever gonna push on like the row level. So yes. yeah, absolutely. You can use formula map for like, do something to all of this subset of rows. Yeah. Sweet. So actually I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen, but like I said, at any point in time, post a chat. I'm watching that very closely. Post to ask a question just like Graham did. Thank you so much for modeling that, Graham. Appreciate it. This is about a conversation. So we've got five exercises that we'll look through. I will share this doc after the fact as well. But just make sure that you keep in touch with us because really it's about us having a conversation about what matters. So I'm going to share my screen when you can see it. If you could give me some kind of signal in chat, like a yes, I can see it. Oh, wow, Maria, your screen is the best screen I've ever seen in my life. Great. Perfect. Alex, glad it's clear. Wonderful. So we're all here in time and space. Love it. Love it. Welcome, Richard. So let's start off first by just what is this thing? And I want to start with some full disclosure. Um, just as short a time as a couple weeks ago, I was like, formula map, does that mean you like map out all the formulas in your doc? <laughs> and then I was like, oh, no. So here's the thing about formula map. I know, embarrassing, but that's all right. I can make mistakes, so all of you can make mistakes as well. But Formula map, the term map actually comes from mathematics, which means you are doing something to a whole bunch of other things. So map in this case is not creating a map or understanding how things are connected. It's actually applying something across a list. So with formula map, what we are doing is we are running a formula on a list of items. Now, the way that uh, it's been described to me that really helped it click is all of you kind of already know how to do formula map because you all have written a column formula 
inside of Coda, right? You press equals, you say row one minus row, uh, column one minus column two equals whatever is in column three. And then that formula runs across every single row that you add to that table. So it's that same logic when we're thinking about formula map, but we're using text or other things. So when we think about the list of items, this could be numbers, it could be rows in a table or a filter table, it could also be a list of text inputs, and then a formula, this could be anything, right? It can be summing, it can be nesting, it can be uh, making a list, all kinds of things. But what we're doing is we're doing the same action to a list of details. Now, another really important part of formula map is this idea of current value, which refers to whatever the current item in that list is. Now, Hannah, could you actually share a little bit about how you think about current value you know, when you're building docs for clients, kind of how that fits in and, and where you see it inside of formula map in particular? Mm -hmm. um, I think like the most straightforward sort of analog for current value is it's super similar to like this row if you're doing yeah. a possible formula, right? If, so like this row dot thing. So in formula map, you're saying, here's my list do this action over this list. But um, for example, like if I'm going over a list of dates and I want to see if the date's a weekend, like I want to, I don't want to look at every date in the list. I want to say, okay, for this specific date of the 12 in the list, tell me if it's a weekend or not. So current value is going to let me grab the date or whatever that current thing in the list is and, and then spit out the evaluation of the formula for each item. Um, so you're going to get, you know, if you have 12 inputs, you're going to get 12 outputs in that case. And obviously you can mm -hmm. do things to those outputs to sum them or, you know, condense them. But um, yeah, generally. Yeah. It's the grand set really like row that is not in fact this row. It's the other one. Yes. I <laughs> love it, Graham. But what I like about what you just did for us, Hannah, is you sort of connected current value to something that we already have some familiarity with. And anytime we're learning a new formula or a new process, starting with what you're already familiar with and like making a connection to it can be really helpful, right? So I, I love that we've made these kind of little maps in our brains. Now, when we think about when to use uh, formula map. Again, you've already used it. Column formulas is essentially a formula map behind the scenes, um, and Coda is taking care of that for you. It's also great when we want to pull out information, and if you don't have a column that's uh, that you can calculate off of, formula map can allow you to do that through. So let's actually jump in to uh, the first exercise here and start to see how this might look and how this might play out. So um, the first exercise is we offer regular and discount prices at our store. And we wanna create a bulleted list of the differences between the sale and the discount prices for each item in the bundle. So before we can tackle this particular problem, we need to first understand our data set, right? If we don't know the data that we're working with, we're not gonna be able to figure out what to do with it and how it fits together. So let's jump over and take a closer look at all of the data behind the scenes. So this is inspired by uh, actually a template of, by one of our code makers, Wilson Silva, who actually runs a store for children's clothing. And so we're doing that here. So how we have it is we have all of our sales. We have the date, we have the shopper ID, we have the items sold. And in this case, we sell bundles of, of products. So the back to school bundle in this case is, let's scroll on down. Back to school is made up of a jumpsuit and a romper, a outerwear, and also some shoes. And notice we have a discount price for the bundle, a regular price for the bundle. And if I scroll on down, I can see all of the products because we have a handy little lookup column right here. And we see the regular price for a dress and the discount price. So what we wanna know here is for every bundle that we sold, what are all of the differences in prices? Kind of what might we have made if, it was, if we weren't doing a sale, right? So let's go ahead and take a look. So how might we do this? We've got a list. In this case, the list of the products inside of the bundle. And we want to run a formula, which is what is the difference in price across this entire list of items. So let's go see how we did this. So I've got a little truncated version of the table here. And here we've got the bulleted list of all the differences. So let's go ahead and see the formula that we've done here. So here we're taking a look at the item sold, which is the item in this row. Then taking a look at the products in that list and notice here the icon difference. Item sold is that one row icon. 
products. Notice how it looks like it's kind of a bunch of rows, sort of like a old timey solitaire where the cards jump off and create that whole array. That means that products, it's a list. So we can run formula map across that list. Then we're saying, all right, let's formula map the regular price minus the discount price. And then let's make a bulleted list. So this, uh, when Hannah and I were talking, this is, seems to be one of the most common situations. So Hannah, whenever you are doing something like this in the docs that you build, kind of how might you think about this or where do you see this particular pattern show up in the docs that you build all the time? Any thoughts or ideas on that? Yeah, I think like anytime you want to summarize information, um, and so one one place that I do this is, you know, the the subtable option in mm -hmm. the detail view is awesome. People love subtables. I love subtables. Um, but if you don't want that detail view, which isn't always like the most condensed, I think a formula map um, as summarizing is like kind of a way to approximate that. Or maybe I can put like yeah. the product name. I can include some text. I can um, sort of create. Like, like you have with a bullet list, just a summary of information that's all related to, you know, a list of items. Um, yeah. As opposed to concatenating or just, you know, just, just spitting out using dot notation, which will give you a list, but you don't get have any control over how that list looks. Um, right. And oh, and then I guess like more generally, like, Anytime you're working with with line items, um, mm -hmm. or the concept of line items, or, or something that's like a similar concept to line items, um, Formula App is a is a really useful tool. Cool, excellent. Oh, and I see we got a question. Let's go ahead, pop it up. Which is, is there the re? Is the reason formula map is necessary here that the products are on another table? Great question. And this leads us to a really important distinction. And I will actually just share from my own experience. When I was putting together these exercises, my first instincts, I was like, oh, I actually really just need to use filter here. This formula map doesn't make sense because filter would have made more sense with the previous exercises. Why formula map makes sense here is that we've got that list of products inside the bundle, right? Fun in the sun is swimwear, outwear, and shoes. So the list are those sub products. If we just wanted to know the difference in price between the sale and the discount for just the bundle, we would just do a, a column format, right? Like this row and then discount minus sale. We wouldn't need formula map because there's no list to run it across. But because we have this list of those products inside of the bundle, that's why formula map makes sense here. Uh, am I getting that right, Hannah? Does that, did I get that right? Is that correct? Uh, yeah, more or less. And I think there are definitely times when it's like tempting to use formula map and it's like, oh, filter actually works here. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think what's key with formula map is I want to do a thing to each item in a list as opposed to maybe summing or aggregating. If you're summing or aggregating, right. you might be able to just use a filter. It kind of depends, but like, oh, I also want to multiply. So I want to take the quantity of items times the number of items ordered for each item in a list. Then formula map starts to make mm -hmm. more sense because you're operating over the, the individual little guys. Yeah, and we have a really good clarification question uh, from Graham, which is, so it doesn't work well if I want to um, generate the list. If you wanna generate the list, right? If we wanna know the items in bundle, we could just go equals item sold dot products bulleted list. And now I see all of those pieces there. So the nice thing about the dot notation is it allows you to pull out information, but formula map allows you to then do something to those items. Yeah, excellent. Let me know if that clarifies there, Graham. Great question. Mm -hmm. Got it, I guess I mean to select the things you're looking at and act from a broader set. Ah, that's really interesting, Graham. Uh, give me a little bit more information about kind of how you would envision that for um, a doc that you're trying to build. If you give us a little more detail around kind of what the action is, we might be able, we'll be able to better um, identify the right uh, formula set. Because the interesting thing about uh, about formulas in Coda is it's kind of like uh, spoken language, right? There are a lot of different ways that we can greet each other. 
I could say, hey, how are you doing today? Or hello, or greetings and salutations, my friend. I'm doing the same thing, but it's slightly a uh, different approach. So when we think about formulas, we can do you know, the same thing using slightly different formulas, depending on kind of our preference, how we like to think about things, what our approach might be. You know, for example, Hannah uses Formula Map all the time. Um, I rarely use it. I generally opt for filter most times, and the docs that I'm building don't require Formula Map but we're doing the same kind of things to our docs. And one thing I just wanna highlight, I realize I, I didn't do this for all of you, is let's just take a look at the syntax of formula map, how it's put together. So if I do equals and formula map, notice the two inputs that we have here, we need a list. So the thing that we want to uh, mess with and then the formula we want to do to that thing. So just a little bit of a, a, a note there. Excellent. Hannah, anything else on kind of this idea of um, summarizing that uh, we should touch on before we move to the next exercise? Um, I saw Graham's uh, follow up on his question and I do have thoughts mm -hmm. on that. Um, so Graham says yeah. my challenge when trying to use a filter within the context of formula map. And yes, um, so you can totally like, make a take a list that's filtered output of a table filtered mm -hmm. you know some subset of something and a filter will also output a list so you can do mm -hmm. table filter in mere parentheses your filter logic and then formula mm -hmm. map just over the results of that um i'm not yeah. sure if that's what you mean so that's good for like i want to run an action in bulk but only if you know the, a checkbox is checked or something yeah, that's actually a really good point, because in this case, our formula that we're running, regular minus discount, is very simple. But we could put a more complex formula in there. And actually, I think one of the uh, later exercises has something. So Graham, we might have something that gets close to what you're looking at. Uh, I think exercise five might be helpful, So if, I, if I'm remembering rightly. Let's take a look at another example here. So now, let's say that we want to create an email message with a summary of how each salesperson has sold. So in this case, maybe we are planning to use the email pack to send out a generated email or a Slack pack. And what we wanna do is we wanna have everybody's totals in there. So let's go again back to the data set so we can take a closer look. So the data set, here we go. Up at the very top, we've got all of the sales and Hannah and I are selling like fiends. We're just here, take this romper. You need this dress, go do it. And so we wanna know how are we both doing? Now, what we could do with this is we could use a simple filter, right? We could say equals all sales dot filter where the salesperson is equal to Maria and then dot, I think it's the amount or the total cost is what that column's called. Yeah, dot sum. And then I could do the same thing for Hannah and have them both there. We could also do formula map here with some with some sort of fun here to give us that nice, easy message that we can pop over. We could put that inside of a table, any good things we do. So let's go ahead and see how we can do this with formula map. So we'll reveal the answer. Look at this beautiful little message. And notice if I hover over it, we see the outline around the whole thing because this is the output of one formula, which is formula map. So let's go ahead, right click on this and take a look. Now, I know whenever I see a big giant formula like this, my blood pressure goes up, Ooh, huh, but it's okay because everything here is parsable and you are the human, this is just machine language. We're just learning again, how to speak a language that a Coda doc understands. So let's explore how this is put together. The first thing I want you to notice is this part of the formula we've already seen right? By using that simple filter that we saw before when I just said, hey, look at the sales table, filter where the salesperson is Maria, and then sum up the total cost of everything that that person has sold. So this, you already know that part. You also already know bulleted list, right? This is what we saw in our first example, creating that bulleted list of all the information, the different prices. So there we go. We got this total, uh, this total part at the end completely done. So the only unique part that we need to look at is up here at the top. So let's first start off with how we are kicking this thing off. We're saying, look at the sales table and then look at the salesperson column. And notice we know that's a list 
because it's got that little, again, solitaire cards, that little icon showing it's kind of one on top of the other. Now, what we want to do is instead of just moving right to then formula map, we want to look for unique here. So we don't want to have each one of those salesperson rows be treated as a separate person, right? We want it to be like every time it's Maria and every time it's Hannah. So that's how we're grounding where we begin. Because now that we have the list, which is this, all sales, salesperson, and every unique one, now we can formula map that list. We can say, great, we got the list. So now what do we want to do with it? And in this case, what we want to do with it is we want to concatenate, which is a fancy way of saying, <laughs> put it all together, <laughs> okay? We're just saying, put everything in one chunk, I'm making a sandwich, that's how I think about it. And the ingredients of our sandwich are the current value of this list and their name. And then we are concatenating that, making our sandwich by putting uh, apostrophe S sales total colon. So this is just creating that text string. The concatenate is creating um, Maria Marquis sales total. So that's just making that one piece. And then we make that bulleted list. So what we're seeing here is, again, how we can translate any new formula that we are presented with. You always want to start with, what about this is familiar? Which of these terms do I already know? Again, if we're thinking about learning language, you know, what vocabulary do you already have from your language flashcards? What verb forms are you already aware of? So once you start with what you know, then you can take a look at what don't I know? And then be able to go ahead and adjust from there. So if we read this like a story, we start by telling Coda, all right, what is the list I want? I want all of the sales by those sales folks and anytime we see the unique person. Then what I want to do to that list is I want to concatenate whatever the current value of that person is, their name with this little bit of text. And then I want to go ahead and also add this other bit, right? I'm also concatenating the cost because I need to know what is the sum. And then I want to make a bulleted list. So we have the ingredient of name, the, uh, the text, and then what is the amount? And then we're making that bulleted list. Hannah, when we look at this particular formula, what else about it do you think would be good for folks to know or um, anytime you've used something similar to this in your own doc building? I think you might be on mute. Yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> it happens, it's 2021. We're yeah, all on I, mute, I it's all know, good. <laughs> I would know where we're using current value here, right? Where you get, um, <laughs> So it's to like get the name of the person as, as a dot attribute. Um, and then we're also using it in this, you know, filter all the sales where the person is the current value. Um, and then uh, what else? I think you covered it pretty well. Um, okay, great. The list is a great thing to use um, with formula map. Note that like, the bulleted list actually is outside of the formula app parentheses. So right. formula app can output almost anything, but you know, you put in a list a lot of the time, you're gonna get a list out. And bulleted list works over an existing list. Um, yeah. So that and formula map dot bulleted list convention is quite common. Awesome. And if you don't like bulleted lists, you can make it a numbered list instead. Right, so whatever whatever works for you in this case. Cool, um, and I really like what you said, Hannah, about this idea that when you have a list in, you're very likely to get that list out. So kind of wanting to format that in a way that is usable really makes a ton of sense. Also, just a reminder here, folks, um, I will be sharing this doc after the session so that you can be playing with it yourselves and being able to work with this um, on your own. But also, as we go through today, there is no such thing as an interruption in our class today. So please do post questions at any time. Great, we got a question from Ben, which is how much harder would it be to show how to output that into a column instead of into the canvas or into an email. If it's too time consuming, don't worry. I appreciate the emoji. Not time consuming at all. So in this case, if we think about how this would be organized, and Hannah, since you are one of our, our super awesome doc builders, I'd love to know kind of how you would think about this. But what I might do is I could see this working in, like if we had a, a table that was like a summarizing table with the sales folks in it, you could then have um, like a column uh, that is sort of the email message of that. 
And so, so you'd have it in a table and then just have the column with the, the person's um, items, like formula mapping across there. That might make sense. Um, and then as far as putting this in an email, you know, what you could do is you could just have this be like the daily Slack message uh, in a table and then, um, or a daily email message in a table and have an automation to uh, send out an email every day. And I can show that automation side. But before I do that, Hannah, how might you think about constructing it, this? That's my kind of initial instinct, but I'd love to hear what mm -hmm. you think. Yeah, I think there's, to get like a little bit meta, uh, a, a question from that question, which is, um, you know, doing this in the canvas versus um, in a column, part of why you're using formula map in the canvas is because you're trying to iterate over structured data. And when you're in a column, you're already sort of doing that. So if in right. a column for whatever reason, you wanted every row to have the same value, like formula map would work well here. Or maybe mm -hmm. you have, a, here's an example, maybe you have a table of months, right? And you want to look at like, like your monthly sales summaries and you want to say, Hannah sold X, Maria sold Y. Then using that formula map, but like you're going to filter the input, you're going to filter the sales based on the month as well. Um, but your your actual formula then is is quite similar. It's just like what's what's the data that I'm looking at, right? Instead of all sales, it's all sales where the month is this month. Um, yeah. It, hopefully that's clear. Yeah, so what we would do, I just did a little uh, thing here, is that you could notice here our list is all sales.salesperson.unique. We would just add another one where uh, another filter up here of the month is equal to this row as like a preamble, right? And then you'd have it in here. And then as far as how we would send this is we could do, uh, we could have a button here that's just like send a Slack message. So let's just, let's just pop this in. This is part of what I love about Formula Fitness is that we can actually play with this a little bit. So we could say, I wanna do an email. I wanna send an email and I could choose the account. I could choose who it's to in the subject line. You know, this could be a monthly sales. And then the content could be equals this row dot in this case, column, column two, I would of course name this. We would, we would actually select it appropriately. Um, and then now when I push that button, it would just send this in an email or send it to Slack. Yeah, cool. I love that idea of like across monthly sales. And that actually gets to that. And again, <clears throat> Graham's question, right? About, oh, how can I play with filter? You can put that filter up at the top first or inside, either one works. Excellent, cool. All right, let's take a look at exercise number three. So now let's say that we want to know how many items of outerwear were sold. So again, let's go back to the data set, remind ourselves what we're working with. So we have all these bundles that we're selling. And in this case, in our bundles, two of them have outerwear as part of it, right? Fun in the sun and back to school. Both of those have outerwear. And maybe we want to know, well, how many coats have we sold over all of our bundles? So now we can have Formula Map come in and help us out. The answer in this case is 15. But let's go ahead and right click and take a look. So here we're saying, um, oh, this is a list combined instead. <laughs> maybe this was a, a comment that you were trying to send to me before. Um, so here, uh, let's actually take a look at this. So Hannah, I believe you added this, correct? Or is this... Oh, here we go. Here's my 15, but here's also with list combined. Great. I've arrived in the present moment. Hello, everybody. How are you? <laughs> so here is my first version. So this gets to what we were talking about around you can have a formula. Uh, and even though we're doing the same thing, getting the same result, greeting somebody, you can have a different way forward depending on how you move. So let's actually take a look at both of these. So the first thing that we have is we have to say, what is our list, right? What is the stuff? And in this case, it's all sales dot the item sold. And we know that we're working with a list because we have that handy little icon that's showing us. Then we need to say, well, what do we want to do to that list? And in this case, we want to count if whatever is the current value in that list um, in the products, if there is outerwear in that products. And then we want to make a sum. And notice there's two different current values that we're working with. And we know that they're different because we have these different colors, green and pink. So the green current value is whatever the item sold is because they're connected by color. And then the current value of products is pink because we know that they're connected. And then we want to make a sum. So we're moving through showing what we're looking for.
So let's, let's keep that in our minds. And now let's take a look at this other example, which is look at the list of all sales dot the item sold and then whatever the products in that list are. Then we want to combine that list, filter where the current value of that is outerwear, and then we want to count it. Hannah, do you want to talk through kind of these two approaches and which one might be uh, better or worse? Yeah, this is, um, I think, an example of like, where do I use filter versus formula map? And mm -hmm. honestly, like, an engineer could probably give like really good reasons why formula map <laughs> is more or less efficient in some cases. There's a lot of like nuance to our mm -hmm. formula language. Generally, if you're working with a doc that's like not running into performance issues, I'd say use what you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. um, but so in this example, um, because so when you look at like items sold um, and then the, the products in each item sold, you can arrive at this same um, answer with a filter because what you're outputting is an aggregation, right? It's not an mm -hmm. individual like line itemized set of data. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess that's like the, the high level distinction for like why filter works here. Um, mm -hmm. The list combine is because you're all, all, all sales dot item sold dot products is actually going to return a list of lists and working on yes. lists of lists gets nasty like so you want to use <laughs> that and that's going to give you one pretty list that you can then filter and and do this yeah that's a really good point so let's let's just take a pause and reiterate what hannah said this is going to make a list of lists and we know that because of the icons right we have that little co solitaire card jump out of the little rows on top of each other here so we know this is a list but we also know that products is a list because it's also got that little stacked icon so we're going to have this list of both of those things and so we need to make that one thing to be able to work across our filter Ooh, cool now here's the other thing this is an exercise but you can do whatever feels like hannah said comfortable for you right formula map might be more efficient but like we could also just do this with some straight filters as well so that's the big thing here and and this is something i want to just make sure we always offer is that when it comes to the coda formula language it's not about i know every formula on coda.io slash formulas because that's just kind of silly right you're not going to need to know every word in the dictionary either right it's really about what is the language that's going to help me accomplish what I need. And if I think about myself as a doc builder, I've been building Coda docs for four years now, and I have never used formula map inside of them because it just never was something I needed to do. Hannah, on the other hand, has been building docs for you know certain other business processes and ends up using formula map quite a bit. And that's also her style, right? So don't worry if you're like, oh, well, I'm not sure. And if I don't know this yet, like, is there something wrong with me? No, it's about finding the right use case to use this on. But then understanding that you can get that same result with different formulas based on what you're looking for. All right, so let's just go back to the, the formula map version here just so we can kind of make that comparison. And also the two current values here, you can use the two current values in formula map, but we are gonna look at a solution with, uh, with name to allow for that clarity. Mm -hmm. Great question, Alex. So basically formula map is analogous with or the array formula from Google Sheets, right? I'm not a big Google Sheets user, so I can't answer that question. Hannah, do you know if that's the case? I'm Googling <laughs> that formula because I also don't, I'm not a Sheets form, but based on the name, I would say probably um, mm. to get briefly like the high level. Um, formula map is working over an array, right? It's doing the same thing to every item in an array. Um, yep. So in other words, you choose between formula map or filter if you want to apply a function transformation to each of the elements in a list or just want to aggregate the filtered items. Yes, exactly. Yes. Um, yeah. There are probably some like edge cases we could go on about, but in general, you are you inputting a list of items and you want to output some items or some things related to those items as a list and then maybe you do stuff to that list or are you saying okay i have a list of items just tell me the sum or the average or some um aggregation 
aggregational, that's not a word, but you know what I mean. <laughs> it is um, you know, condensed set of data about all of those items. Mm -hmm. I don't care about the individual attributes so much. Exactly. Yeah. I, I, I love I love this idea of kind of where does the action sit, right? Am I do I need to do something to this or do I just want to extract something? Right. Am I cooking or am I ordering something from a menu? Right. It kind of allows you to take the, the, the direction there can be really helpful. Nice. Excellent. Well done, Alex. <laughs> Perfect. So let's take a look at the fourth exercise here. So now let's imagine that we have a set of tasks and this is a table that every customer record needs to undergo. So if we have a new customer come in, we want to make sure we do some tasks and we want a button that creates a new set of tasks based on the type of customer, if they're new or existing. So let's go to our little data set here. Over here. Perfect. Nice. <laughs> Glad that we've landed on that. Yeah, it's one of those things like I'm just not I'm was never really an Excel user, never really a Sheets user. So I have like very little context, right? Uh, so when we think about the tasks, here we go. Um, if we have a new customer, this is the template of tasks that we want them to do. It's called new customer template. And if they're a new customer, we want to enter their birthday, have a welcome phone call from DeAndre, and also set up a profile. If they're existing customer, we just want to have a check-in call from DeAndre. So we have this different set of tasks that we're working through. So how could we do this? Here we go. We've got our basic table with our sales. And here's a button that needs some formatting, needs some things to do to it. We would open it up. We would go ahead and do our button options and add whatever we're looking for here. So let's go ahead and see how this works. So here we have this create tasks button. We know that it's functional because it's now popping with color. And we also have all of the tasks that we're, uh, we're mo moving through here. So we see all of them have been added in this case. So let's look at this button and see how we've put it together. Go to our button options. And here we go. The action for this button, and we, we decided to switch over to making this a formula instead of like a pre-built action by just clicking the F button here. So let's go ahead and parse this because we've got all these chips crowding our vision. So the first part of this formula is getting a filter, right? So I'm going to actually do shift enter and make a little bit of space here. So shift enter, a great way to kind of give yourself some breathing room. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get the stuff that we are going to do formulas to. And the stuff is look at that new customer template and filter where this row's customer type contains whatever that type in the, the template is, right? Then we wanna do a formula map. And in this case, we wanna add a row to our tasks table where the tasks name is the current value and where the tasks parent is whatever this shopper's name is. So this idea of adding a row based on something, this is inspired by, uh, by you, Hannah, um, in the, some examples that you shared. So Hannah, can you walk through, since I know this is something you use pretty frequently in the docs that you build, can you walk through the logic here and kind of how folks can think about it? Yeah, so basically um, think about like, I wanna add a set of tasks for every row, right? I wanna apply this template. Mm -hmm. Um, so we've already figured out, okay, here's our template of rows to add. So formula map is saying add row. Um, and again, we're doing for each item, right? So in this case, the item is a row in the new customer template where the type is the current value or the current customer's type. So if the row in sales is customer type existing, show me existing. So for anything that matches that filter, add a row. And then add row in those parentheses, you're just putting the arguments that the add row formula takes. So treating it just like if we're adding a row one off. Um, yeah. Add row to the tasks table, tasks name, current value. Um, I think, you know, current value here is, again, just notice where you're using current value. So, um, you know, we can tell by the color. Again, new customer template is green. Current value is green. Current value is going to be a row from that new customer template. So, you know, is, okay, is that a lookup column? Um, so that was a little scattered, but hopefully that kind of- <laughs> Yeah, and it, totally. And it actually leads into a question we had from Karina, which is, 
Why do we have all these commas here instead of periods? Great question. So the way I'm gonna answer this question is actually just by typing uh, equals and going to add row, add row. Oh, we can't do it separately, darn. Okay, well, we'll let's go ahead and we'll just open it up again. Do, 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 buttons, button options. So in this case, the way add row works, see here it says the, the table we wanna add the rows to, and then what, the, what column we wanna have, and then what do we wanna put in that column? So in this case, we're using parentheses because we're not extrapolating, pulling things out like we did with the bundles of like, show me all the items in the bundle. What we're doing instead is we're just filling in for this column, put this, for this column, put this, for this column, put this. So the col the, the commas here are telling Coda what uh, the differences between each column. Yeah, really great catch there, Karina. Nice. Yeah, of course. And you know, one thing that I always uh, like to do when I'm working with new um, new information or new formulas is always check when I add it check the little helper text here because it lets you know the right syntax that you want to put in here. And great question, Graham, you know, can we have, you know, how many columns can we have? You can have this add row be as long as you want, right? So if we had our um, a giant table, like maybe this task is very involved and it's like a 12 column thing, we could have 12 different uh, commas here and be able to add them through. Yeah, totally. And you know, the other thing, again, it's like, w when it comes to Coda, it's, it's always an open book test, right? You never have to be like, Oh, did I remember it? No, like, check it out, right? Go and open up the helper text. Oh, did I get that right? I do that all the time. And I teach these sessions, right? And if we also think about engineers, right? Engineers aren't programming perfectly. They're like checking out Stack Overflow. And they're, you know, people, people are doing that all the time. So it's, it's about using the resources that are available to us as we're learning. Excellent, perfect. All right, let's take a look at exercise number five. So maybe we're like, you know what? We don't wanna have a column full of buttons in our database anymore. We just want one button to add those tasks to the table for all new customers. So this is what Hannah was talking about at the very beginning today, where you know maybe you just don't want to have this button column because maybe it's slowing your dock down and it's, there's too many things, or maybe you just want to make things really, really easy for yourself, which I have mad respect for. So let's go ahead and open up this button, which is add tasks for new clients. And I'm going to right click on it. And here we go. We're going to have a giant woo formula here. So what we actually have are two different formula maps. So we have a formula map inside a formula map, a little bit of inception here. So let's break this thing down. <laughs> I know, right? Heck of a formula indeed, but it is all attainable. We can always break it down. Just like a really long sentence, we can diagram it and we can find all of its pieces and help it make sense. So let's go ahead and just start to make some sense of this. So I'm gonna go shift enter with the first formula map that I find. And then I'm gonna do shift enter with the second formula map that I find here. All right, so the first thing we all need, know that we need whenever we formula map is what's the stuff? What is the list? In this case, it's all of those sales. So that's the list we're working with. So then the first thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and name some current values and things like that. So what we're doing here is we have uh, the with name formula. Hannah, could you share what the with name formula is? It's actually a relatively recent addition to our Coda dictionary, but could you share a little bit about what this means? Yeah, with name, um, there are a few different uses for it, but it, it lets you give some part of your formula um, a, a way to refer to it within that mm -hmm. formula. So I find it really useful, like if I'm like, oh, I would use a column for this formula because there's so much stuff happening in it and I wanna reuse like one filter statement for, you know, sometimes with like switch ifs and stuff, you find yourself reusing the same filter language over and over. With name, instead of having to like create a separate column to hold that logic and refer to the column, you can just define your expression in with name and then refer to that within the same formula. It's only gonna be like transiently available in that formula, you're not gonna be able to, access it elsewhere in your doc, but it just makes mm -hmm. writing and understanding formulas a lot easier. It's also yeah. necessity for nested formula maps because yes. current value in formula map gets 
real confusing real fast if you're using two layers because mm -hmm. all of a sudden Coda's formula language is like what current value do you mean? Yes. So totally. Um, is it kind of like calling? Yeah, sort of, Andrew. It's like a recipe within a recipe. Exactly. It's yeah. It's just like it's in code. You would call it like defining a variable, right? It's just letting me grab something that I can easily reference without having to rewrite the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, but then in formula map, um, nesting formula maps was previously not possible, and so um, including this with name, now I can say. Basically, when you nest formula maps, you want to, at the outer level, say, what am I going to name the current item in the list mm -hmm. so that I can reference it in the inner la layer of formula map? So in this yeah. case, we just need current purchase. Um, mm -hmm. And then the syntax is, gets a little bit confusing, but then, like, basically, so when you're using with name, like, the first thing is the value you want to name. The second thing is the actual name you're going to give that value. And then the third thing is just like the rest of the formula. It's what am I actually going to evaluate using this, you know, with name? Yeah. So let's break it down. And again, checking out our helper text right here, right? So the value. So in this case, what is the thing that we're working with that needs a name? And that in this case is the current value of this first list. Then the name that we want to give it is current purchase, because this helps us, right? Then we can track it like we see here, right? We're now using it. We've given ourselves x, x equals six. So now we know that this is six. So now we're filtering where that current purchase, uh, the customer type of it contains whatever the type in that new customer template is. So again, the colors help us kind of map where we're looking for. So this is just really giving us which customer type are we looking at for that purchase. So that's the first formula map. Second formula map here is now what we've seen before, right? This is all familiar from that previous example, right? This is where we are saying, um, hey, add a row to the task table with all of the details, with all those nice little commas. And here we have a different current value for this one. And that's why having current purchase here is so important so that Coda knows what we're working on. So in this case, the only part of this formula that is new is this middle bit. Everything else is something you've seen before. So I see there's some questions here. So let's go ahead, jump back over here. So where in there are we actually telling it what the name is? We are doing that right here. So if we highlight with name, it's um, the first one, value, and then the name is current purchase. Oh, don't apologize. It's important to reiterate because there's a lot of things coming through. So not even worrying about it. And then the next question is, so other formulas can live within the with name without a closing parentheses first. And that is correct. You actually, you have to put them within the parentheses mm -hmm. if you want the variable to apply. Yep. Um, so some, I have to like frequently check back to Maria's point of like using reference material. I have to frequently check back for examples when I'm writing nested formula maps mm -hmm. still, because like, it's like what, where do I define with name? Cause I kind of want to do it like at the beginning, but that gets like gnarly sometimes. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, Alex, I appreciate the cookies. Chocolate chip is my favorite. So thank you. Um, but yeah, so this is again, um, notice how here, this is solving the same problem that we saw with exercise four, but just for a different intention, right? The person here is like, you know what? I just want to have, um, just one button that just adds all the things so i can do that at the end of you know the end of the shift right in the previous examples like oh no i'll just like click on that or maybe uh, another thing that we could do is we could say um let's scroll on up scroll 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 we could just go in here and say uh, let's go button and we want to push buttons with this button we could say, great, push all the buttons in that. Um, in this case, there's a lot of example tables here. But I could say, just push the buttons in that table. And then we have one button to push all of them, right? That also solves the problem. But in this case, this person just wanted to strip out all of the buttons in the dock to be able to just create a different experience. So in this case, it's a very sort of edge case option for this person based on what they want, right? For you, it might be something kind of different. But again, what we can do is we can nest that because we're just, again, taking the list and doing something to the list, right? We have the list, we're doing something to that list, then we're going to do something to that list, yeah? 
but always looking for what you already know. Yeah, Hannah, I, I heard you uh, get ready to say something. Oh, I was just gonna um, give like a, a framework for how I think about nested formula maps. Ooh, yeah. Which is, is basically how many lists am I working with? So like an example um, that I've worked with with a client recently is having a list of inventory and like product SKUs where each product SKU exists at like a, a specific level, right? Say like I'm selling Yeti tumblers and I have the like actual product and then I have the color and then I have the size, right? <laughs> well, they also wanted a summarization table where it's like, okay, but give me the product and the color, but I wanna summarize the size. And rather than go through and create a new, like manually create a new table, right? Of that like hot one level up of data, I used formula map to say, okay, show me a list of all the products that, ma that are like match this product name. And then from that list, because I wanted a, an output that was a list of like product color, right? Just without the size. So from that list of like all the products, then do another list for each product of all the colors in that product. Mm -hmm. So you're at how many list layers is that? Like three lists? <laughs> Basically, yeah. like yeah. I want to, to get a data output based on like this nesting series of lists. The um, mm -hmm. formula map and especially nested formula map is really useful for that. Yeah. So again, y'all always go back to the data, right? Like what is the stuff that I'm working with and what do I need to do to it? And then you can start to figure out, oh, like Hannah just did, I've actually got three lists, which means great, I've got three formula maps that I can nest up. Yeah, um, <laughs> excellent. So when we think about all of these pieces coming together, um, the key is to always look at the colors, the icons, and then the, uh, the the syntax whenever we type you know, equals and we choose uh, with name, right? Always checking what is this helper text telling me, which lets me know the ingredients that I need to have in this recipe, right? I need carrots, peas, and onions, right? And being able to come on through there. So as we come into our final minutes here together, please do keep those questions coming, y'all. But Hannah, if you were to give somebody advice for getting started with figuring out where Formula Map makes sense in docs they might already have or docs they're thinking about building, what advice would that be? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I think like, I think Formula Map can look intimidating because um, there's there's not really another formula quite like it. Um, but just remember that it's for each, right? Give me a list for each thing in this list, do something. Um, also this idea that like, okay, I'm inputting a set, right? I'm inputting a list. I'm either gonna get a list back out or I want to do something to this list's output. But like in terms of like filter versus formula map, um, generally when working with like complex formulas too, thinking about reverse engineering, right? So like, what's the output that I want? And then moving like stepwise back from that. So sometimes with formula maps, if I'm like nesting them, I'll actually start with the innermost formula map first, right? Like the most granular formula map. And then think about like, okay, what does the input to this formula map need to be? Okay, I need a formula map to get to that, right? So kind of like breaking it down to the smallest piece of the recipe and then figuring out, okay, what do I need to do to get to this piece? The other thing that I'll just offer, and this is something I actually did prepping this, is um, if you find a formula that you're like, ah, I couldn't create that from scratch, you can always just copy it and paste it and change the variables. So for example, Hannah shared with me a doc where she had uh, the tasks right, of the, like we had with create tasks for uh, a subset. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't write this from scratch. So all I did is I just copied the one from her example, pasted it in and just changed the variables for my new stuff and tinkered with it. So that is always okay. Copying and pasting is always fine as long as it's not making uh, separate tables inside of your doc, it's just gonna slow you down. Views are better. Uh, yeah. And <laughs> Actually, I love uh, that Yaren is bringing up this idea of like, why calling it formula map? We actually um, have a couple names that we are advocating for internally, because like I said at the beginning, it's like formula map that 
to me as a non-mathematical person, like I'm not, not a math major, that wasn't my jam. Um, I was like, it makes a map of stuff. And then if you ask a mathematician, like my partner, who also is a coder person, um, then he's like, oh yeah, you're just mapping the functions across this. And I was like, excuse me, what? Can you say that again? <laughs> so we've actually advocated for a lot of like, how can we make this more descriptive? And uh, Hannah is definitely pro for each. Um, we have a couple um, people who are like apply to list. Um, Hannah, are there any other sort of words that we have advocating flying around? Also, if folks have ideas, Go ahead and post it in. We'll advocate in time. <laughs> yes, the for each team is stepping up to the bat. I love it, Graham. I think um, for each or like do list thing are the yeah. two most common um, yes. that we can work with. Totally. So y'all, we've got about three more minutes. List actions. Ooh, I like that, Karina. Do a list thing. Yeah, we'll add that. I'll tell Shashir. It's now called do a list thing. Make it happen. Um, so any other questions as we're settling in here? I also posted a link to the doc so all of you can go ahead and play around, take a take a look, copy paste those formulas as much as you like. Um, but what else can we help you with today? Anything else on your minds? Have some fun. And the thing I will leave you with is that usually it's filter that you're going to need. And sometimes you'll need formula map. So again, are you ordering takeout? Filter. Are you cooking from scratch? Formula map. Hey, is it true that we're teaching us how to use Zapier this week too? Yes, on Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific, I'm going to be sitting down with a uh, fabulous folk from Zapier to talk about the update row trigger and different ways to kind of get started and actually using an example about how the Zapier team generates code docs for every meeting based on a Zap with a calendar integration, which I'm really excited about. Also, uh, for those of you who are new to the crew, um, we host webinars every single week. Coda.io slash webinars is our webinar doc. You can go ahead and register for all forthcoming things. You can also, here, let me actually just share my screen um, so that y'all can get the visual here. Coda.io slash webinars. I'm gonna share it. You should see it in just a moment. Um, but here on our webinar doc, we've got everything that's forthcoming. So you can see, hey, what's happening in the next week or what's happening in the next 90 days? What can I expect for the quarter? You can also go ahead and see um, past webinars. So if you want to see everything that we've done in the past, you can click and watch them. Since y'all are here for Formula Fitness, I might recommend the Formula Fitness area. This is where we have all of the Formula Fitness sessions that we've done. Uh, you can watch them and you can also open the doc for each of these. So Formula Map, I will be adding this information here today. But this is a great way to kind of get that uh, recap and be able to practice and flex your muscles on this. So definitely check those things out um, and favorite it. I always love seeing uh, new faces. Hey, awesome, Alex. That's fab, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Ooh, that's a really good idea, Alex. A, a button to subscribe to current upcoming Formula Fitness webinars. Ooh, let me add this to my to-do list. I love it. Excellent. Any other questions? I'm adding this to my to-do list while we, while we make this button to subscribe. And I will definitely be using a concatenate formula to create a fancy little message of like, hey, friend, this webinar is happening now. You should register. Cool. All right, y'all. I think we're good. Yeah, totally. Have some fun. Start playing around because that's really where it happens, right? It's through the tinkering is where we really learn. And, and it's where you start to make that connection. And you're going to find your own language, your own preferences, your own way forward. And always remember, if you are struggling or need help, the community, Coda, uh, the community.coda.io, great place to go. And also our support team, fantastic folks all around. You have an entire company ready and waiting to support you. So just let us know how we can uh, celebrate, support, give you cheers. We're here for you. All right, y'all. Have a lovely rest of your week. I will see you next time. Take care and we'll see you. Bye.